Thank you, everyone. Uh, and congratulations. Congratulations to all the organizers of this very impressive conference. One of the most famous novels in the English language, A Tale of Two Cities, opens with the lines, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I've spent much of the past 30 years working on the fight against climate change. And when it comes to fighting climate change, this is the best of times and it's the worst of times. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in my opening remarks for your conference tonight. So on the one hand, the cost of clean energy technologies are cheap and getting cheaper. The cost of solar power today is about 10% of the cost a decade ago. And the cost of wind power is about a third of the cost a decade ago. The cost of energy storage is moving rapidly in the same direction. And as a result, we've seen record deployments of solar power and wind power around the world. In the United States, our new administration, the Biden administration, has the strongest commitment to fighting climate change of any administration in our nation's history. He's appointed extraordinary leaders to help fight the climate change battle. And just yesterday announced bold new measures to increase the deployment of electric vehicles in our country. In China, President Xi has made a bold commitment to reach carbon neutrality by 2060, which seized attention around the world and will make a big contribution, an enormous and important contribution to meeting the climate change challenge. And renewable power in China, in China leads the world um, and setting a record pace. In Europe, there are ambitious plans to fight climate change. The European Union has announced bold goals in the past several months. So governments around the world are taking on this challenge in a way they never have before. So is the private sector. We see huge amounts of private capital flowing into the transition towards clean energy and the fight against climate change. We see trillion dollar commitments from major financial institutions, green lending standards, and much more that will make a big difference uh, in the fight against climate change. And around the world, public awareness and public attention to climate change has never been higher. And I think most important, public attention or attention and commitment is especially strong among young people, among people of, of your generation. Um, to fight global warming, we need not just financial capital, but we need human capital. This is the battle that's gonna take decades to prevail. So it's, it's going to be the fight of the professional lifetime for every, every student listening today. There are going to be enormous opportunities in taking on this battle. Whether you, If you're interested in engineering, if you're interested in uh, government, if you're interested in finance, if you're interested in many other fields, there's a contribution that you can make to this battle. So that's the good news. But this is not only the best of times, it's also the worst of times. This summer, we've seen astonishing number of climate-related disasters around the world. A heat wave in Canada and the northwestern U.S. shattered temperature records. The town of Lytton, Canada, which is in the Arctic region, uh, saw temperatures of 49 degrees Celsius. The town burned to the ground the next day, consumed by a wildfire. Wildfires continue to burn today throughout the Western United States uh, as a result of, uh, of uh, global warming, drying forests, drying soils, and, and land, man land management practices. In Henan province last month, almost a full year of rain fell in 72 hours, including an astonishing 20 centimeters in a single hour, cause of, causing massive flooding. There was massive flooding causing terrible loss of life in Germany last month. And the New York City subway systems, very near Columbia, just right uptown from Columbia, saw massive flooding last month. Um, these types of massive rain events are exactly what scientists predict in a world with global warming. We have a warmer atmosphere leading to more moisture in the atmosphere, uh, leading to more severe rain events. And despite all this global attention to, to global warming, greenhouse gas emissions continue to climb uh, throughout the world. Uh, 
we are talking a lot about climate change, but emissions are continuing to rise. Um, despite the drop in the cost of renewable power, which I spoke about before, fossil fuels, which lead to climate change, still make up 80% of our energy mix around the world, just as they did several decades ago. In my country, the United States, although our president is very ambitious, our Senate and our court system may impose significant constraints on his ability to achieve climate change objectives. And in China, despite President Xi's ambitious goals for 2060, construction of coal-fired power plants continues at a rapid pace, which poses a significant threat to the world's ability to meet its climate goals. More than half of the new coal-fired power plants in the world last year were built in China. And relations between the US and China are more tense and difficult than at any time in almost 50 years, as Dean Jano just said. But I believe that in times when disagreements are strong and tensions are high, conferences like this are especially important. The people of the United States and China have had close bonds of friendship more, for more than a century. I first visited China on a Columbia U University program 40 years ago this summer. That tradition of friendship and close bonds benefits the people of both countries. And with respect to climate change, which is what I work on, and clean energy, I believe the cooperation between the U.S. and China is possible. If our governments want to cooperate, they can find a way to do it. And if governments are unable to cooperate, perhaps parts of civil society uh, can do so. Congratulations again on this impressive conference. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, all best wishes and good luck in the day ahead.